This is awful. After the Calgary Flames signed Anthony Mantha to a one-year prove-it deal in free agency this summer, with the hopes of trading him for futures at the deadline, he unfortunately has suffered a season-ending injury. While this hurts a lot for the player and the organization, it does beg the question of who will replace him. We're going to get into all that more in this video, but first, I want to welcome you to Flames Digest. I'm Mark Griffith. If you're new around here and you love the Flames, make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the latest news, updates, reports, and rumors revolving around your Calgary Flames. We would love to welcome you to the Flames Digest family. Let's try and hit 3K subs before the end of the year. I know you guys can do it, and I appreciate it immensely. Now, let's hop in and talk about how Mantha is done for the season. A very, very tough break for Anthony Mantha, who again was kind of on, you know, a prove it deal with the Flames, really needed to prove what he can do in order to hopefully get another big contract down the road somewhere, but it's looking pretty bad now. And you really do got to feel for the player. But um, as you can see here, an injury update from the Flames themselves. So Ford Anthony Mantha will require surgery on an ACL injury surgery will take place this Thursday and he will be out for the remainder of the season. Eric Francis of course had to say tough news for Anthony Mantha who signed a one-year show me contract and is now done for the season. Again tough blow for Mantha and it really does suck. Great that he's getting surgery right away to repair it. I know a lot of people it takes a lot of time to get the ACL surgery um, that they need but either way very tough blow. We know ACL injuries are a big deal and again I don't know what this means for Mantha and the rest of his career. Um, I don't know if another team will want to pick him up ever, but uh, we'll have to see. I'm sure he will be playing hockey again, but he may very well have played his last game in a Calgary Flames uniform. So what was the injury? The right winger last played on November 5th against the Habs. So less than a week ago, but um, obviously the first game of our Eastern road trip. On his sixth shift of the game, Mantha received a hit from Canadians forward Emil Heinemann, which caused him to fall awkwardly into the boards. And I think the key word there is awkwardly because when people watched it live, you know, it really didn't seem like all that big of a deal. You know, you knew he was hurt, but he skated off and it, it was it was interesting to say the least. It was crazy to know that it did end up being such a severe injury. We didn't get much news over the past week regarding the injury. Um, you knew as soon as Dryden Hunt was called up that something was going on and then he was sent back down and then Klapka, of course, came back up, another right winger. So very interesting. It is, again, too bad for Mantha. Obviously, I can't play the highlights here for copyright reason, but essentially the way the play went was Mantha was kind of on a bit of a breakaway, didn't score, went behind the net, and yeah, got, got hit awkwardly, fell in an awkward way. Uh, no way was it a malicious play, but again, just too bad that it did end up being one of those big time ACL injuries. This sucks. He was proving himself well in Calgary and was looking like a possible candidate for a playoff team's middle six at the deadline. This comes from Carson on Instagram and uh, it, it does suck. You know, he really could have been traded to a middle six team or sorry, to a contending team to play in their middle six, which obviously could have got Calgary some good future. So not only does it suck for Mantha, of course, and that's who we care about the most here, but it does also kind of suck for the Flames that their one big free agency splash in, you know, the whole season and when we were hoping it would get good value out of it and get some futures for it, you're no longer going to get anything that does kind of stink a little bit. If we take a quick look at Mantha's stats so far this season, not a terrible season. So four goals and three assists for seven points in 13 games. So more than a point every other game. Uh, was really starting to find his game. The big key stat there is the plus minus. He was a plus six actually on this team, which is very impressive. And I know there were points in this season where people were getting sick of him because, you know, there was a little bit of laziness and it didn't seem like there was all that much drive, but at some points he looked great. Remember that first game against Vancouver, the Gordie Howe hat trick, the first Flames goal of the season looked great with Huberto at times. So again, it does kind of suck. I don't think this means his career is over. I do think this means that his time as a Flame is over, but we will just have to wait and see. You know, on a prove it deal to get a season ending injury, that really does suck. But it does beg the question internally for the organization of who will replace him. So let's take a look at some of these replacements. Now, I spoke a little bit about this man earlier and in the video from earlier today, but the transaction, the key transaction in all of this that was actually announced before it was announced that Mantha would be done for this season was that the Flames have recalled forward Adam Klapka from the Calgary 
Wranglers. And uh, I do now know, I didn't know in the video earlier today, but I do now know he will not be in the lineup tonight um, against the LA Kings at home. But assume, you can probably assume that he will find his way into the lineup sooner than later. You know, both Rooney and Kirkland on the fourth line, couple of centers. You don't always need that. And guess what? Adam Klapka is a right winger, so he is a direct replacement for Anthony Mantha. And he can kind of fit in on any of these lines. Maybe not the uh, Coronado, Coleman, and Backlund line, but either way, you could see him on the first, second, or fourth line as the right winger. You'd assume when he comes up um, that he would be on the fourth line, but this is the number one replacement, in my opinion, direct replacement. Now, a couple other right wingers that we have in the system. The first on the left here, could we see the NHL return of absolute sharpshooter, Martin Furk? Not only does he have a wonderful name, but he hasn't played the NHL in a while now, and he could come up, you know, kind of like an Anthony Mantha in a way where he has that offensive capability, but can be a little bit lazy at times. Martin Furk, not necessarily quite as good as Mantha, but it would be very interesting to see if he does come up at some point this year. I think that would be hilarious. Another one, a way more realistic one, would be Walker Dewar, who, you know, has come up and down from the NHL over the past couple of seasons. We've obviously seen him in a flame sweater quite a bit. So he could also be a good replacement as he does have that NHL experience. I could very well see him coming into the lineup. There are a couple other guys who aren't direct replacements because they're not naturally right wingers. But I want to take a look at these two fellas. The top two scorers on the team right now. Well, on the Wranglers right now, I should say. So first, center Rory Cairns, who has kind of come out of nowhere. He has 14 points in 14 games, but 10 of those points are goals. He is playing an insane game of hockey right now, and it would be great to see if he could come up. Now, the reason why he wouldn't, of course, is he doesn't have the experience, but more importantly, that he's not directly a right winger. So it could be interesting, but I don't think it would be a terrible option to bring him up, get him a little bit of NHL experience, because it doesn't cost the Flames anything if they do. Now, the other one, of course, he has to be mentioned is... Jacob Pelche. Will he be brought up sooner than later? Who knows? Of course, he's naturally a left winger, but you can shift a lot of these forwards around left wing, center, right wing. A lot of them can play pretty much anywhere. Is Pelche one of them? No, he's not a center, but he could find himself being a left wing or a right wing, depending on who moves around. And I know a lot of people do want to see him. He's also having an amazing year down in the A. Two goals, 12 assists, for 14 points in 14 games, point per game. He is playing incredibly, would be very interesting. But let me know down below who you want to see play a little bit more. I know Klapka, but other than that, which other Wrangler would you like to see get some playing time now that Mantha is unfortunately out for the season? Now, the last thing I wanted to address before we get into the comment of the day is the slow starts that the Flames have been having. And everyone is talking about it lately. So these are just some articles from the past couple days. So three takeaways as Flames start slow again and fall in shootout to the Sabres. If the Flames could have been better in the third period in that game, it would have gone a lot better. Another article you can see from the Hockey News there. I know I cut off a little bit of it, but another Flames comeback masks fatal flaw of sleepy starts. And it is becoming a bit of a problem. It's a concern. To pull up the stats, I've didn't get a screenshot of them. I meant to and then just completely forgot, but I do have them right here. So via the NHL stat page, the Flames are the NHL's second worst first period team. That is something that has to improve with a minus nine goal differential. Then they are bottom 10 in the league in the second period with a minus two goal differential. So terribly slow starts in the first not great in the second, but as we know, in the third period, they are the fourth best third period team in the league, which is pretty crazy because there are some teams that have barely lost like Winnipeg, Washington, Carolina. I know there's a few more, but either way, top four in the league in the third period is a great thing to have, but they need to improve especially in the first period, but over the first couple of periods, they have these slow, sleepy starts and it needs to be addressed for sure. Now let's wrap up this video with the comment of the day, which goes exactly with what I was just talking about. Um, and it comes from good old general. I see you updated your profile picture. I didn't know who it was at first, but he says, we need to stop starting slow. It's not a good way to play. Even if we're not contenders, create the culture of playing hard all the time, not just in the third period. It's very important to play a very good game. And I completely agree with you there. They need to address this issue as well as, you know, some of the ones we talked about a couple of days ago in terms of giveaways and whatnot and all of that. But this is a major, major issue. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe like we saw here today and have a wonderful rest of your day and enjoy the game tonight. Go Flames, go.